All right, joining me now is Senator Kevin Kramer from the great state of North Dakota. We're going to talk about the bad news, which is inflation. And then we're going to get to the good news, which is the Ukraine story, which seems to be improving. Uh, Mr. Kramer, welcome back, sir. First of all, what did you make of the inflation numbers? Apparently, they're holding a celebratory party, James Taylor and who knows what, in the White House, um, which I think is a slap in the face to America's great middle class working folks. But what are you thinking after today's number? Well, first of all, with regard to the party over at the White House, the only thing I can say is the one thing that's more incompetent than their policy is their politics. How you can be so tone deaf as to celebrate on this day a bill that they dubbed the Inflation Reduction Act is beyond tone deafness. It's so disgusting. It is. It's offensive, and I think it'll blow up in their faces. With regard to the number, I wasn't at all surprised. In fact, the fact that it came in worse than what was expected, um, it didn't surprise me at all. For all the reasons you've been talking about, and we should, I think, be crystal clear, Larry, this is the Biden administration's fault. It's not anybody else's. No one else shares this with them except the administration and the Democrats in Congress. Because when you look at the numbers year over year, they're obviously bad. I mean, food inflation is the highest it's been since Jimmy Carter was president. Um, shelter inflation for housing, highest it's been since 1982. Larry, this is all because of the American Rescue Plan, $2 trillion poured on onto the, to the economy. Now recently, the three quarters of a trillion dollars they poured on that, that came in the form of this Inflation Reduction Act, which is really the Green New Deal. And then you throw on this crazy student loan forgiveness thing. It's no wonder that inflation is rampant, and it's going to go on for a long time. I agree with you. I, don't, I do not see an end in sight, certainly for the next several quarters. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem with this story is, uh, and the economy right. is going to keep sinking because of the inflation problem and real wages falling. This is going to be, it's going to take a while if we can ever solve it. You know, I was just thinking as you were talking about these most recent, the Inflation Reduction Act and the canceling of student loans, Senator Kramer, if the GOP takes both houses, can you repeal the Inflation Reduction Act and can you uh, overturn the cancellation of the student debt, which a lot of us, including myself, think was unconstitutional in the first place. Can you get rid of that stuff if you take back Congress? Well, on the legislative side, pretty difficult to do because the president would veto any bill yeah. that would undo a previous bill. With regard to student loan debt, I do believe, like you, that it was unconstitutional. It's grossly unfair, obviously, as well as being inflationary. But... Um, you know, hopefully litigation will take care of that if nothing else does, because I don't see, again, how we can undo something while he's, while Joe Biden is still in the White House, unless, unless that, that long lost Joe Biden that was once a deal maker, that was, that was transactional, unless we could find that Joe Biden again, maybe in a divided government, we could at least undo some of the damage. But your previous guests make an important point. Even with, the, with a divided House and Senate, at least we can stop yeah. some of the bleeding. But it's important we take the Senate, and, and Larry, let me just tell you, we're going to. I know some people are wringing their hands and they're looking at recent trends. I'm telling you, Republicans are going to take the House and we're going to take the Senate. And when we do, the one piece of leverage we have that's significant, as you know, of course, is, is um, the confirmation of nominees and, and, and the promotion of, of people in the Pentagon and the State Department. The Senate has that unique power, and we ought to wield it and, and use it with every possible measure that we can to stop some of this stuff and try to, try to change the trajectory. Because you're right, we need a supply side solution really, really quickly, and we need to get about it right you away. You know, I riffed last night about, I, I'm optimistic. I mean, I think all this negative August talk, uh, the Democrats are coming back. I don't see it. I think we have fine candidates. They could refine their messages somewhat. Like today, uh, inflation is going to be on the front pages of every newspaper, every single media outlook. So they got to go for it. So I'm optimistic. Kellyanne Conway was on last night. She actually knows something about politics, unlike myself. Right. And she thinks they're in pretty good shape, too. Senator, uh, can I go to a, a couple of minutes? Um, the news on Ukraine, I, I believe you're on right. the Armed Services Committee. Is that, is that correct? I am. Yeah. I am. So the, the news on Ukraine is improving, okay, quite a bit. Uh, the counteroffensive is taking back the Northeast, uh, uh, Kharkiv, for example, uh, and 
they got the Russians on the run. There's talk that uh, Russians are withdrawing troops. They're not even going to hold elections in the eastern part of Ukraine. What do you make of that? I, I, I hate to jump around with the victory dance, but it sure reads better. Well, first of all, we ought to enjoy the victories when we can get them, and certainly the momentum in Ukraine provides some opportunity. We also have to be careful not to spike the football before we cross the, the, the goal line. That said, I just, uh, pre previous to coming down here to talk to you, was with some former members of parliament from Ukraine who are here uh, advocating, of course, for their country and giving us uh, the lowdown. And th they're feeling pretty good, obviously, quite optimistic. And I think, you know, war, and I hate to keep using sports illustrations, but war is a lot like sports and that momentum means as much as anything. And momentum generates success and success attracts more success. And one of the, the challenges I think that's going to be fun to watch or at least interesting to watch from a distance is how does this affect Vladimir Putin at home? Mm -hmm. The resolve of the Russian people, many of whom didn't have their hearts in this in the first place. So I think as life gets more challenging for, for Vladimir Putin, um, you know, think the momentum continues with uh, the people of Ukraine and, and those very brave warriors that are fighting a fight with, with not nearly as good of, of uh, weapon systems, but a lot more heart. And quite frankly, a lot fewer of them. But remember what they're fighting for, Larry. They're fighting for their freedom yep. and their country. Uh, that's a great motivator, as, as we are reminded when we think about our own start to our own great country. Yeah, here. you know, you fight like hell for your own homeland. That's right. That's the freedom, right. the freedom, the morale. I mean, there's a lot of Russian body bags going home. You read these that's news right. accounts, the Russian army, their kids are fleeing. They don't want any part of it. They're leaving their knapsacks behind. They're running. And there's a lot of criticism of Putin. I just wonder whether there's going to be some changes in the Kremlin. Give you the last word on that one. Well, it'd certainly be interesting to see that happen. And, and, of course, you don't go into that lightly when you're dealing with a thug like him. And he's always got his hand on the red button that, that scares a lot of people, rightfully so. It's to be taken seriously. But at the same time, even a dictatorial thug like Vladimir Putin can't control, you know, millions of people when they turn on him. So um, we, we need to continue to support Ukraine, obviously, and we need to have Ukraine keep this momentum. I'd like to see even more support from other uh, European allies. The United States is carrying a pretty big part of this burden, um, and we, we need to see this continue. But at the same time, Larry, we need to come to the rescue of Europe with clean American-produced yes oil yes. and natural gas yes. and fill that void as well. That will help our economy. That helps their um, security. It's good for the world. Yeah. Turn on the spigots. Turn on Amen. the spigots. Don't make this any harder than it needs to be. Senator Kevin Kramer, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. As